Hello guys and welcome to the first episode of a new tutorial series. Um, and in this tutorial series, we're going to be creating a replica of the Dank Memer bot. Now, if you don't know what the Dank Memer bot is, it's um, basically a really fun, you know, bot with like a really unique currency system um, that you can use to like, you know, get coins and like, you know, uh, gamble and rob other players. And it's just a really fun Discord bot. Um, so today I'll be sh uh, showing you how you can replicate that bot. Obviously, this won't be the only episode. This will be probably like a 20, 30 episode long um, video uh, series because of how many uh, different features that Dank Memer bot actually has. Um, now, if you haven't actually joined my Discord server, um, I highly suggest you join it. I'll put a link in the descriptions below or in the comments below. Um, and Basically, if you join it, you'll be uh, able to ask me uh, directly for any programming help that you need, uh, not just in Unity, but in, in JavaScript, uh, which I'm very proficient at, or C Sharp, um, or HTML or CSS or any other um, full stack uh, development need that you have. Um, and if you ever uh, you know, just want to talk to me or talk to any of the uh, server members, uh, then feel free to join below. With that said, let's get started with the tutorial. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go into uh, Node.js.org and download Node.js. Um, now, I recommend you download this version. Um, so basically, just click an, on that and run it. Um, and once you have that done, you're just going to have to download Visual Studio's code if you don't already have it. Now, if you don't know what Visual Studio's code is, it's just a very nice uh, programming software, uh, much like Visual Studio's if you already have it, um, except it's blue. And it's used for mainly uh, most programmers um, for everything else other than Unity. I mean, you can use actually Visual Studio's code for Unity as well. Uh, it's just not many people who use it. Um, but anyways, yeah, so here's Visual Studio's code. So once you have downloaded those two different things, um, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to head over to Discord Developer Portal. Um, but anyways, guys, now that you're in the Discord Developer Portal, you're just going to click on New Applications and give your new Discord bot a name. And once you have created a new Discord bot, Basically here you can just change the app icon or the profile of your bot and then you can change the name here. You can see I named it Dank Memer Clone. You don't have to call it Dank Memer Clone, uh, but I'm just going to call it that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and now that you have this done, you just want to go back into Visual Studios. Okay, so once you're in Visual Studios, you just want to click on Terminal, New Terminal. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that Dank, or sorry, not Dank Memer, um, Node.js is for sure installed on your PC, or else this step will not work. So you want to what you want to type is npm install discord.js. And what this will do is it'll install this, the discord packet, uh, .js packet. You can see here, these files appeared in my desktop or in my folder. Um, and yeah, basically that's what it does. Um, and now you can just create a new folder called src, and this will be the source code for all of our um, discord bot. And we just gonna call this discord or um, index.js, and this will kind of be the main JavaScript um, area, uh, JavaScript uh, script, I guess. Um, and what you want to do is you want to just go back into the Discord bot, um, and we're just going to create a new bot. So add bot, yes, do it. Um, and then there's a couple of things here. So we can change the icon here um, to whatever image you want uh, it to be. Um, and then here's where you change the bot's permissions before you, so you know how like some bots, like, you know, um, when you add them, they kind of like on, when you paste like, or like click on add to like server, they ask for certain permissions. This is basically the permissions that are uh, basically being given, are being given to the bot um, or that the bot needs to operate. And what you want to do is you want to go to OAuth 2 and you want to just click bot. And then you just want to copy this and you want, just want to open up a new browser, paste it in, and then basically you can now invite your bot to your server. So that's basically how you invite the bot. You click on OAuth, click on bot, and then copy the link. And then um, I'm just going to go and uh, add it to the coding in Unity server, which is my personal server. Um, again, if you have not joined, it's a great place. Um, you should join. Uh, verify that you're a human. Um, and then in your and then in your Discord, uh, you should see that the Dank Mirror clone bot has slid into the server. And it's going to be default offline um, because um, 
you haven't actually done anything yet to uh, start the uh, bot. And I'll show you how you can start the bot in a second. Um, but basically, it's just going to be offline. And now I'm just going to create a new, um, or I'm just going to be using the Dank Libre clone in the um, in the mod command uh, channel. But basically, uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to come and code some basic uh, functions into our Discord bot. So now that you are in Visual Studios again, what you want to do is you want to type const discord is equal to require discord.js. And this basically just calls on the package that we have installed here. If this package is not installed, if you didn't run node, uh, node install discord.js, this will not work and your entire bot will not work. Um, and basically what you want to type next is const client is equal to new discord.clients. And basically this just creates a new discord client. And what you want to type now is client.login and then go into your developer portal again. And then what you want to do is you want to go into bot and copy the token. Don't reveal this token to anybody else. And because with this token, people can basically hijack your bot and make it do whatever you, whatever um, they want it to do. So you just want to copy this and then just, you know, don't do anything else. Um, and basically this is my token. Uh, you, you can you can see it um, because this bot isn't really important. Um, so basically, yeah, don't reveal this token to anybody else that you do not trust. Um, so yeah, anyways, um, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do clients.on ready. So basically when the bot is ready to uh, run a uh, startup, you're just gonna type uh, equals and then greater than and then open and close set, um, curly brackets. Basically, cur cur uh, JavaScript is very similar to C Sharp. Uh, curly brackets basically still define uh, what a function is. And you just want to print something like uh, the bot has started up. So the bot has started up. Or dank memer is running. Or clone is running. Um, and the reason that um, uh, this is not print is because in JavaScript print actually makes you, I think prints, print the page, um, or like print, print the current HTML page. So print doesn't work in JavaScript, only console.log works. Um, it's a bit hard to get used to, but it, yeah. Um, and the next thing you want to do is let's just create a little, quick little like function. So like client dot on message, um, let's say um if the message dot content is equal to oops um and another thing in javascript that differs from c sharp is that um when you're defining definitive like equivalence um you need three equal signs um instead of two i think two also works um but three is like the standard way to do it um, instead of wearing as in unity, two equal signs is, will work and three will just give you a red line <laughs> telling you you have an error. Um, and we're just going to create the most basic thing. Um, if you say ping, then the Discord bot will re reply. So message.reply. Oops. And always, you always have to close off your, uh, or actually you don't actually, so you don't actually need semicolons in JavaScript. You can add them, but like, it doesn't make a difference whether I add it or not. And also control S to save. Um, so it doesn't actually matter um, if I put semicolons here or not, which is really neat. So now that we have our basic bot, what we want to do is we want to do node, or I believe it's node index. Whoops, my bad. I didn't spell index correctly. Um, or okay, so. Never mind. I got an error here. Um, Discord.js is not found. Oh, I think that might be because I accidentally, or I didn't, but I think I, that's because I put um, it in the SRC um, folder. So I guess we can just delete the folder instead um, because for some reason directories uh, are having like issues connecting um, when I put it in the folder. So what you can do is you can see here that dank memer clone is actually running. So if I say ping, it'll say pong, um, which is really cool. And the reason here that it pinged me 
is because we type here message.reply. So if we do message.channel.send, then the ping will actually happen. So really annoying, what you have to do for Discord bots, is you have to close the terminal every time and do node index every time you make a change. So now you can go in here and you can do ping, and this time I'll only type pong. So depend, depending on what, what type of uh, thing you wanna do, uh, whoops, not ping, my bad, uh, reply. There we go. So a bit more on how this works. Basically, the bot has like an active listener. Um, now, I don't know if you guys have ever used add event listeners on Unity. Uh, basically, basically, it creates a listener in the server, in the channel, in the specific channel for a message. Um, in my case, it's ping. And on, upon that message, this is like a temporary variable that will reference the message. And basically, we check if the message con message is equal to ping. If it is, then we're just going to reply pong. So that's pretty, pretty much how it works. Um, now, great. So we have established that um, we have our um, our bot working. Um, and if you guys have any errors up to this point, I know like setting up is really hard, especially for me when I started. Don't hesitate to join the Discord server down in the descriptions below, and then just like ask for help. Um, there, uh, I'm happy to help, and I'm sure there's many of our members who also have experience in the field who can help you if I'm not available. So yeah. Um, anyways, um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a prefix. So basically, you know how Dank Memer, um, it's like please PLS. Like you have to type PLS before a command. Um, I can show you real quick. So like. Let's go into Dank Memer, the Dank Memer channel, and we can go, please beg. Um, so please beg will yield us, you know, uh, or like show us that our command has worked. If we don't type please and type only beg, nothing will work. Um, so this is a good way for the bot to differentiate between whether a person is trying to use the command or just talking to another person. So yeah, uh, we're just going to create a quick prefab right now. Okay, so now we can go um, and into our script, we can type uh, const uh, prefix is going to be equal to, um, let's say, I don't want to make it like an exact copy. We can make it like, uh, I don't know, P. Or not. Let, let's make an exclamation mark, the most generic one you can make. So basically, exclamation mark. Um, and yeah. So now on our client dot on message, we can delete this. Um, and what we can say is if um, not message dot content dot starts with starts with yeah prefix or uh, let me try to find the the button for or uh, for some reason I don't have. I just got a new keyboard and for some reason it doesn't have oh there it is. Oh okay, never mind. That it looked strange, so I couldn't tell what it was. Or message.author.bot return. Whoops, let me just delete that. So if basically if um the Discord message does not start with the prefix that we say here, which is the exclamation mark, then we will stop the code and nothing will happen. Or if the author of the message was a bot, so like if Dank Memer somehow said like exclamation mark uh, ping, then we won't. We also won't respond. Um, and basically, what we're going to do here is we're just going to do const args is equal to message dot content dot slice. So we're slicing the string that we're receiving in our case the message into um, uh, into uh, two or three or four different, um, um, basically four different strings, um, and basically we're just gonna split them, um, and we're gonna format them like so. Um, and basically, what you want to do now is you just want to go const command is equal to args dot shift dot two lowercase. Now, why we do this is we want to make sure that our command is in um, that there's no like you know uppercases that will ruin our code. So if they type for some reason uppercase ping, um, our command 
if we just like input the raw message, if they type with an uppercase ping, it won't work here. Which is why we need to make sure that everything here is lowercase. Also, why is there um, a backslash here? It should be a period. Sorry, my bad. So if command, again, three equal signs is equal to ping, then message.channel.send pong. Else if, oops. Um, so otherwise, um, if the command is equal to beep, um, then we will respond with boop. Basically, we're just going to try to make sure that um, the Discord bot will return um, what we're trying to tell it to do. Uh, or, or is recognizing that uh, we are telling it uh, what, what we're telling it to do. Um, so basically just node index again, and what we can do is we can do ping, it won't work. Um, we actually have an error here, which is interesting. Um, right here, uh, starts with prefix, uh, if not, oh, my bad. I don't know why Discord is there, my bad. Okay, there we go. Also, this should not be capitalized. I think, yeah, I, I'm getting autocorrected by my extensions. So a lot of these things happen. Sorry about that. So now if we do ping, nothing will happen. But, or no, we have another error. It's probably something dumb again. Uh, so we have here, if message dot, uh, you know what? Let's actually cover these in curly brackets just to make sure that the code knows what we're doing. Um, so let's actually read the error we have here. Um, message is not defined, my bad. Usually it's called, it's message, not MSG. Um, so yeah, my bad. Um, so yeah, um, now finally, we can type node index and everything will work. So we do ping, nothing happens. Um, and if we do not ping, or like so, or like so, it will respond. But the second we don't use our exclamation mark, nothing will happen. So that's pretty much it for the first video. Um, thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we're gonna be setting up something called Firebase which is going to be the database for our Discord bot. Um, now, um, if Firebase does cost money, if you go over the data limit, but below, I believe it is um, 10 gigs a month of data uh, transfer between the real-time database, and I think around 50,000 50, reads and 20,000 writes for the Firestore database, I think under those premises, um, like, our Discord bots that we're going to be building here probably aren't going to be too big. Um, so should be able to hold up to 100 users maximum if you build, like, if you are using Firebase before you actually have to pay. So if you guys want to uh, create, like, a bigger Discord bot for a bigger server, um, I have some alternatives that I can DM you um, if you join our Discord server. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, anyways, thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Um, and yeah, um, I'll see you next time. Bye.